So I asked you already how you were doing, so I will not do it again. <laughs> so, uh, so this is, uh, first, I'm very excited like, uh, that it's the first uh, F-Sharp meetup happening in DC. Like, this, is, uh, this is very, very exciting. So tonight, we'll do uh, what I call the gentle introduction to machine learning with F-Sharp. So it will be a bit of machine learning, a lot of F-Sharp, uh, obviously. But first, I will start. Uh, so quick words about me. My name is uh, Matthias. You can find me on Twitter at Brandevendor. I'm actually not a software engineer. Uh, I'm coming from, uh, I was an economist, I became an operations research guy, and at some point, 10 years ago, uh, after doing uh, way too much of Excel, I realized that this was maybe not the right tool, and so I started doing C Sharp. And four years ago, uh, I learned that I should learn a language every year. I opened Visual Studio 2010, there was a language called F Sharp, and so I just tried it because uh, why not? And uh, I haven't looked back since, and it's uh, what I love. Uh, that's the language I love. I run the .NET uh, group in San Francisco. I am from San Francisco. Also the F-Sharp group over there. So if you ever come to the West Coast and want a fix of F-Sharp, come and visit us at sfsharp.org. Uh, yes, and I have a blog and all of that. And uh, <laughs> the good stuff. The reason I'm here today, so, uh, the, so it started like uh, two months ago. I, I gave actually the dojo in San Francisco and people told me, uh, Hey, uh, people from a rally in North Carolina told, uh, told me, hey, it would be nice if you came to rally. So I said, sure, I'm going to do it in rally. And then people in Charlotte told me, actually, it's not that far. Maybe you could stop by uh, Charlotte. I said, sure. And then uh, I realized I have a friend in Nashville. And so it looks like it was kind of uh, on uh, the, the path. So I decided maybe uh, Nash Nashville too. And so at that point, it's like I'm doing, I think, 14 talks in two weeks, something like that. So it's like I have been... I gave uh, two talks in Houston, one in, uh, one in, uh, one in uh, Nashville. Uh, so, well, you can see the trip. So I'm midway through, and it's, uh, it's been pretty fun so far. I've seen like, uh, all sorts of communities everywhere in the US talking about F-Shop, and it has been a blast. And I'm sure tonight we'll do the same. Big thanks to, uh, to B9 Medical and uh, Anton, uh, aka DevShorts, to uh, making it happen. So maybe I'll propose again a big hand for the company, because it's really awesome to have it. And also to uh, INETA, so they have been helping me a bit with the trip and all of that. Uh, and also big thanks for you guys to uh, come out tonight. That's pretty cool. It's actually a pretty big, uh, pretty big group. Like I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. And uh, now that I told you a few things about me, I will ask you just a minimum about you guys to get a sense of who you are. So maybe start, uh, who has written F Sharp in the last month? Okay. Who has written, okay. Okay, don't, don't, be, uh, don't be shy. <laughs> it's a good thing. Um, who has written F sharp at all? Okay, so it looks like your people who write F sharp have been writing it like consistently, and otherwise, uh, not that much. So the others, like uh, who is uh, maybe C sharp or .NET? And who is uh, coming from uh, completely different languages? Like, uh, no, what are these languages? Camel, Python, and C. Okay, well, Camel is a, a close yeah. cousin, so that should be fine. Other? Uh, PHP, uh, Ruby, Python. Okay, cool. Yeah, no Excellent. Yeah, that should work out. So this is really has no direct connection with anything I said, but uh, I wanted to talk about this, and I didn't find a way to put it in the, in the slide, so I put it just in the middle of it. Uh, so, in case uh, you are a beginner in F-Sharp and you want to go further, there is a great, con uh, a great conference happening in uh, September 18 and 19 in New York. It's called Progressive F-Sharp Tutorials. They have one track which is beginners, it's two days of uh, talks, one track which is advanced. And when, uh, when I mean advanced, is like one of the talks is like extending the compiler, stuff like that, so a pretty uh, advanced advanced. Like the main speaker will be Don Syme, like the, the inventor of the language, Miguel de Casa, the guy who founded uh, Xamarin will be there. Like, uh, so if you want to uh, step up your game in F-Sharp, like, uh, it's a great uh, place to go. Okay, so let's go about tonight. So uh, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to take a competition from Kaggle. Uh, does uh, anybody not know what Kaggle is? Okay, cool. So Kaggle.com is a startup from San Francisco and uh, what, they, uh, what they do, the original tagline was uh, data science as a sport. So the, uh, the concept is this, you're a company or you're an organization, you have a data set and you don't have a team of data scientists. Uh, you go to Kaggle, you give them the data, data set, they're going to make it into a cleanup data set and a competition. 
And then uh, anybody can enter the competition, write models, and the best predictive model will win. So you can submit every day, you see how you rank, and uh, so on and so forth. They have competitions which are just for free, for, for fun. Uh, up to competitions, I think one of them for General Electric had a price of $2 million, so it goes uh, all the way. You can make money, you can just, uh, it's, it's just pretty fun. So tonight we're going to take uh, one of these uh, contests which uh, I did for Kex. And uh, the goal is going to do, to do a few things. Uh, one of them, the first one is really to have fun, write code and have fun. So it's not going to be a talk, you're really going to be uh, doing most of the work. I'm going to help you, but uh, you would be working. What we're going to do is like, write a machine learning classifier from zero, no libraries, no frameworks, no nothing, like from scratch, using F sharp. And hopefully uh, you'll pick up also some ideas for machine learning, some concepts, uh, stuff like that. Uh, that's the goal. So usually in dojos, uh, you get instructions which are, hey, do this, and you just do this. I think in this case, it's uh, maybe a bit more complicated than the typical dojo. So I will give you some explanations and some material to get through it. Also, given that a good part of the room is not that familiar with F sharp, it would not totally be fair to tell you, hey, write in F sharp something you have never done before. Here is the swimming pool jump. So I will uh, start by taking like 10 minutes to explain to you what uh, we will be doing, and then we will do it. So what you may need to know. The, uh, the contest we're going to take is the uh, Kaggle Digit Recognizer Contest. So what this is, uh, is uh, essentially that's it. It's like they took people and they asked them, hey, here is a piece of paper, write me numbers. One, seven, two, whatever you want. Then you put them in a scanner and what you get is like scans or like a digitized, uh, digitized uh, list of numbers. Now you ha they have a data set of 50,000 handwritten digits. And we're going to use this to uh, build a function which is going to be automatically recognizing numbers. Like you give it a picture, it's going to tell you, I think this is a three. You give it a picture, it's a seven, and so on and so forth. That's what we're going to be doing today. The, the original training sample is 50,000. For today, uh, I reduced it to 5,000, if only because like, the 50,000 is big. And then if you do some mistakes in your algorithm, you could be stuck for two hours waiting for a result, which uh, spoils a bit the fun. Um. So the data looks like that. So what you're going to have is uh, just to uh, have a bit of pictures to explain how it works. So each of the uh, records in the data set is like uh, somebody wrote a five and you're going to have something which is a, a square uh, like, uh, like pixels and the pixels go from white to black. Uh, they're actually grayscale, so you have a dark, uh, dark gray, like gray stuff like that. The real data is a bit bigger than what I showed. So the, the scans are like 28 by 28 pixels. So these are like squares. Uh, Grayscale, so each pixel is encoded from 0 to 255. Uh, the file is also flattened, so each thing is really a big flat line of numbers. So what you have is like the first thing is the number, like this is a 5. And then you have 28 by 28, which is a 784 pixels in a row. And that's a CSV file. By the way, if anybody has questions, if anything is unclear, please stop me, right? Because. Uh, so in a graphical form, this is how it looks. Like, so this is not 28 by 28, but I simplified it a bit. Suppose you have a, a 1, which is a 4 by 4. So really what's happening here is like uh, I'm slicing this, 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 like 1 slice, 2 slice, 3 slice, 4 slice. Then that guy goes here, goes here, goes here, goes here. So I have now a flat line. First number is a 1 because that's a 1. And then I have all my pixels as a flat line. Clear? Not clear? Cool, OK. So I said like what we're going to do is to uh, write a classifier. So uh, one legitimate question would be, what is a classifier? Uh, in plain English, a classifier is uh, something which says, if you give me an unknown data point, I will give you a prediction as to what class that thing belongs to. So in our case, uh, so class, hence classifier. In that case, we have uh, 10 classes, which are labels. So the, class, the classifier, uh, the goal of the classifier is to take an unknown data point, which is an image, and return to you a zero or a one or a two or a nine, like whatever it's predicting. <coughs> there are lots of ways you could uh, write that classifier because there are lots of algorithms available. Uh, given that it's a gentle introduction, that like we take a time-tested classic, which is also feasible in uh, two hours. And so we're going to use an algorithm called the KNN classifier. So uh, KNN stands for K nearest neighbors algorithm. And uh, in plain English, this is what it does. Uh, it, uh, the algorithm says, if you give me an unknown subject to classify, so in that case, an image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at every known example I have. That's my training set. So in that case, I have like 50,000 images. I know what they are. 
I'm going to look at the uh, I'm going to look for the k images which are the most similar to the one you gave me. Similar, you could uh, translate to closest. Uh, so now I have k images uh, which look similar to what I want, and I'm going to take a majority vote among these guys. So suppose I, I, uh, a k, uh, k equal three would be a three nearest neighbor. I would take the three closest images and maybe I get the first one says it's a five, the second one says it's a five, and the third says it's a three. I would say it's a five because that's the majority of things I have in uh, what I got. So that's, uh, it's actually a pretty uh, simple and uh, somewhat dumb algorithm, but uh, it's, uh, it's machine learning. So uh, to illustrate a bit how it would work, uh, uh, look, let's take the simplest possible thing which could work, which would be a one nearest neighbor uh, classifier. And let's say that uh, here uh, my training sample is uh, not 50,000, not even 5,000, but I have just two training samples. I have a one and I have a zero. And so now my problem is like what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to classify that guy. I don't know what it is, I just have pixels. So my goal would be from this sample here, what is the most similar to that guy? So to do this, uh, the, the general idea is I'm going to look at it pixel by pixel. So if I take this and this, if I start comparing, that's the same, that's the same, that's the same. Here I have a difference. So I mapped here, like uh, I have one difference here. That's 255, like that's black, that's zero. So the, the difference would be 255 to the square. If I take that guy and that guy, if I look, I have much more differences. That, that doesn't match, that doesn't match, doesn't match. And so I'm getting like for each mis mismatch here, I'm getting 255 to the square plus, 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 plus. So the distance between this and this is going to be this, which is much smaller than that guy. So it is much, uh, that's the metric I'm going to use to say this is much more similar. So in a more uh, mathematical form, like the, uh, what I use to measure how close, how similar the two things are, is I'm measuring, I'm using Euclidean distance between uh, both images measured as a, what's the distance between each pixel from each image. Uh, the only, uh, so the formula is on the guidelines I'm giving afterwards, so it's not usually important, and you could use other distances that would be just fine. Uh, the one thing maybe to note is that like normally you're going to use a square root uh, on top of this. It turns out that you don't really need it because uh, it turns out you don't really need it and uh, I can, we can talk about this offline afterwards. So, so now is like I, I, what I did is I, I computed uh, the distance between this and this, this and this. I'm going to say this guy is closest. Therefore, I predict that that guy is the same thing as this guy and this guy is a one. So my classifier would say, this should be a one, and that's how the algorithm works. Yeah, questions? So the more data you have, the better that results. That's correct. We calculated the distance here, you're just comparing pixel one to pixel one, pixel two to pixel two, correct. pixel three to pixel three, okay. Yeah, and I want to go back to your point because uh, I got questions sometimes which say, hey, how is this machine learning? This is a pretty dumb algorithm. But if you go back to the definition, uh, the formal definition of machine learning is a, an algorithm where if you take a task and you give it more information, it's going to get better at the task. And that fits to a T, that algorithm. Like the more data you're going to give it, the better it's going to be at uh, giving you a proper classification. Well, I have a question. Yep. So I've used something like that before. Mm -hmm. And then it's like you have to, as well, I used it for you, just go through and like validate it. And mm -hmm. then Figure out like okay, these are the actually correct answers. Yep. So. So I don't really see how this then takes it to the next level. Of so I'm not completely. Uh, let me try to answer the question I heard, and I'm not sure if I uh, I heard the right question. But like a uh, part of your question revolves around validation and maybe what happens if you have more data, what happens if your algorithm changes. So half of what we're going to do today is doing the algorithm. The second half, or the end of the thing, is actually how do you know it even works and how do you establish a baseline for if you change it so that you can see whether you're improving the grading or stuff like that. Is this? Well, <coughs> I guess it's that um, the type of thing that I've been doing, it's like you have to, it becomes kind of a manual process in checking it. Uh-huh. So I guess. I, I see, yeah. She's asking about, you know, how do you retrain the classifier with a new training data set, right? Yeah. Well, in this case, that's going to be simple because uh, the, uh, you're really giving it a bigger data set, but the formula is going. How about we uh, look at it on the, uh, on the algorithm itself? Because hopefully on this one, it should be pretty straightforward what will be happening. Okay. And I don't think I have a, 
short, compact, and a 30 second answer. So let's take it, uh, like maybe let's do it and see how, uh, how this fits in the, uh, the process. Fair? Cool. Other questions? Is there a reason you chose uh, the nearest neighbor algorithm as your chosen algorithm? Yes. Uh, or, okay, I mean, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, I can give you two reasons. One of them is that like, it works pretty well, and two is that like, it's the uh, most realistic to do from scratch in two hours. Okay. Okay. So the logistics. Uh, this is a dojo. So what we're going to do is like it's not doing. Uh, we're going to work in groups. Uh, given how many we are, so let me count. Ten, twelve, So we have 21 people in the room. So I think what would be good would be four groups of five. So what I will do, and so you're going to be uh, organized in groups. Usually in my experience, what, what works great is like to have like two people with laptops and three people like observing and helping and maybe rotating a bit. Uh, but it's, uh, it's not a competition. If you want to be antisocial, you want to be in your corner alone, that's fine, that works. <laughs> But uh, it's more fun as a group. That's also how you learn how people do things and uh, stuff like that. <coughs> so the process will be simple. Uh, so I said five groups, like right? four groups. So what you're going to do is you, you count one, two, three, four, one, two, etc. And you remember the, no the number you said, right? So let's start. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Uh, right. I'm just observing. Four. One. Two. Three. Four. One. Two. Cool. So everybody has a number. So uh, I let you guess, but like everybody who has a one will be one group. Everybody who has a two will be another group. Three will be another group. Four will be another group. Uh, so what we'll do is like uh, before reorganizing, I'll just finish on one thing. Uh, so we'll work for maybe uh, two hours, like uh, I'll uh, check temperature where people are, stuff like that. Uh, last half an hour, uh, we'll just go over the group, see what everybody did, maybe share experiences, see what worked, what didn't work, good surprises, bad surprises, stuff like that, so that everybody learns beyond the groups. And also, uh, so uh, I'm going to give you a bit of guidance, especially because we're going to do it from, uh, from, uh, from F-Sharp. So the, uh, you're going to have a guided script. And you can find that guided script at uh, either of these three addresses. So one of them is on a GitHub at the gist. The uh, bit.ly address is also the gist. And the other one, I put it on uh, Azure because yesterday I realized and today apparently GitHub was down again, which uh, uh, I freaked out quite a bit when I had to give that talk yesterday because I realized that uh, that document was inaccessible. So I put it in another place. So uh, I, I leave it up and then maybe I let the groups now organize. So what I would suggest is each group takes a table. And uh, you can start. <coughs> can start downloading this. And uh, I will uh, once the groups are set up. Is like then I will I will give like last instructions and we'll get started and you will be working. Some of the ones over here. Is this your pizza? This is. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's. Let's see if we can't get them. Oh, really? Uh, I said I. What else can I do? Two? Yes. Yeah. 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 It might be, let's kind of find out a lot of space to sit on that side. Yeah. I don't care. Ones over here? Ones? I saw you looking lost. Put the chair. Who else is a one? Three. One. Five, so you're a one. All right, so we're going to take a seat. All right. Here, take a seat, or are you sitting right here? <laughs> and so for people who didn't get the Wi-Fi, like the Wi-Fi is on the whiteboard. White board yeah, there's, there's some cards kind of floating around with the Wi-Fi key and the password. Feel free to pass them around if you need it. Can you pass us one of those cards? Yeah. So, I like to do better. So, 
mid, mid install. Well, I, I installed a Visual Studio Express for web, mm -hmm. and I. I couldn't yeah, find like how to make that episode. Yeah, you have to add it, like install a second thing oh, on okay. top of that. So do I need this? Or? Yeah. Uh, if you already have yeah. Visual Studio Express, yeah. you just Google yeah, Express F Sharp 2012. Yeah, I don't have that. Okay. And yeah, just get that. Oh. Um, yeah. Is that what you really set up? I see it's something which looks like a problem. So that, that looks fine. Normally, like, I would like everybody to be on either of these three addresses yeah. so that uh, at least one person in each group has that. And that's going to be the uh, guideline document. And once you have it, just uh, hold on. And I'll, uh, I'll just take five more minutes of your time. Yep. Yeah, this is what I uh, Is one of your slides how, how do you make an F sharp progress? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's the first line of pretty much of the file so you're getting there. Huh? All oh, right, so okay. open, open up Visual Studio 2012. Did everybody get that uh, that address? What's your name? Alex. Alex, hey, same time. That's Faisal. This is Seth. It's Charles. What's your name? Anastasia. Anastasia. Okay. We all work together. Too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, go to new project. Is everybody good? Yes. I'll put it back afterwards, but uh, just in case. So let's let's move on. So what uh, what you guys should have gotten is a document which looks. Do you have the document? Do you have it? Someone's got it. Okay. Yeah. Sure. You should have something which looks like this. Right. So what we're going to do is like somebody asked me, hey, what's the the? So this document is describing. Uh, <coughs> I broke the work of building the classifier and all of this into like eight steps from like a baby steps to maybe things which are a bit harder and I also tried to put in syntax uh, hints or help on F -sharp so that uh, if you haven't seen it before or if you're not super comfortable with it, you have uh, points to start. So what I propose is uh, we're going to uh, do the first steps together, actually step zero which is getting started and then from one to eight uh, you're on your own and uh, you make the magic happen. So. Uh, first thing I will do is I will start Visual Studio and I will uh, do new project and I'm going to take a library, it doesn't really matter what it is, and I'm going to call it maybe DC Dojo. Everybody with me? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say OK. And so if you do this, at that point you should have a brand new project, all shiny, all clean with a library file, and this one we do not care about, and a file which is called script.fsx, and that's what we're going to use today. Everything we're going to do is going to be in the scripting environment, because that's a nice way to just experiment, see what happens, and, uh, and it's just uh, more convenient. Everybody has a project? Could you hold on? So, sorry, I got dropped from my company's uh, server. Okay. Can you hold on the presentation one more time? Sure. Yeah, it's a deal up. Okay. So what you end up doing is do this. Right click here. Maybe I should put uh, that uh, address on the white board. Uh, here. Let's do this. Um. Everything. Uh, it's mapped to the function. And it's also in the board. So basically what you do is you uh, load all that stuff into the Interactive. Okay. okay. So what you can do is you can do it with sharp expressions and other stuff. Okay. So you don't want it to let's say instantiate your class. You can do so that's it. The, uh, the address is up there also. And and that's one. I think the bitly addresses are kind of case sensitive too. Okay. So uh, that may be why you yeah. might be getting issues. Yeah. Okay. So I go back to. Uh, did you. Did you uh, yeah. Sorry. Good. No problem at all. It won't let me save anything if I'm not on So. So. Parentheses. So at that point, you should have a script. Okay. And so what we're going to do is simply this, is that you're going to go to the, uh, the file you got from uh, Jest or the file you got from the other address. Just copy the entire thing. I'm going to take it all. That's a big uh, up, copy. Because a copy-paste is the true tested way to do development. That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to take my script uh, and I'm going to paste. Uh, uh, 
this isn't what I wanted, so I didn't paste what I wanted, but uh, Okay, here we go. <coughs> so at that point, you should have uh, the uh, you should have nuked whatever was in the script file, and you should have like uh, another script in there, which is really like uh, my hints and stuff, so that uh, you guys can uh, can work on this. So normally, I would tell you, hey, just start reading into it. My experience with software engineers is like uh, there is a user manual, nobody ever uses it or reads it. So it's like uh, I propose that we uh, just look a bit uh, through it and like uh, I will explain a bit how this is supposed to be used. So if I go from the top, uh, you're going to see, so it's explaining a bit what we're doing here, that's fine. But if you go through the file, you're going to, uh, so on, uh, here I have a section, we say this file provides some guidance to the problem. I have numbered sections, so you will see like section zero getting started or getting ready. Then it's followed by section one getting some data section two, extracting columns. And so this is broken by steps, and each step is supposed to be one step in the overall process. Uh, and in each of these guys, you're going to see two things, three things actually. You're going to see uh, general comments, and you're going to see uh, blocks where, where there is like your code goes here. I let you imagine what this is about. Like this is the place where you're supposed to type in your code when you get what's, uh, what's going on so that, uh, so that your code goes here and you can move on to the problem. The other thing that you're going to see is blocks which are marked like this, like F sharp quick starter. So you have open and end blocks, and these are more stuff which is, hey, for this section, you might need to know about this particular syntax, or it might come in handy. So for instance, if I take, I think, section, uh, I'm going to take a section, uh, well, actually, I can start in section zero. We'll see it in, in action. So, if, uh, so my recommendation is that go through each section, read it, probably run it then go to the, your code goes here, and probably if you start to go further than this and you hit problems, I recommend you go to the next section because you're probably going to already attack the next thing and I probably have hints for you right below. So, let's go through section zero, uh, getting ready. Create a F-sharp library, done. Script FS6, done, so that's uh, cool. Now we have an F-sharp quick starter. So that's the part which is about explaining a bit how, which goes from here to here. And this guy is about, uh, so this is about giving you some syntax or some help. So, um, so in that case, so let's read it together. With f -sharp script files, uh, you can live code and see what happens. Try typing let x equal 42 in the script file. Right click and select execute in interactive. So I'm going to do that, like control C. I'm going to put it here. So I typed in my script. And now if I right click, I should see execute in interactive here. And if I do that, I will see some uh, magic happen, I hope. Yes. Uh, I see now a window at the bottom, which is like the, uh, the interactive window, where I see that whatever I typed and executed is now executed, and I see what happens. So that's the type of thing we're going to do today. Type in the FSX file, execute, see what happens, and a tweak until you have what you want. Now, next line says, try typing x plus 3, uh, semicolon, semicolon in the interactive window. So I'm just going to do this, because I'm very disciplined. Uh, semi, semi. And here, what I see is like it's executing directly in the, the interactive. So the, uh, the key here is like uh, semicolon, semicolon means like execute whatever I just typed. <laughs> it won't execute until you type this. Uh, it's useful because if you want to type three or four lines uh, together, like, uh, that's how you tell it, like hold off and then uh, run that stuff. Everybody with me so far? I'm hoping I'm not insultingly slow here, but... Uh, uh, the uh, last thing in uh, this piece is uh, now right-click the following two lines and execute. So I'm going to do this here. Execute in interactive. And if you see here, it's like instead of getting a result, I'm getting something which is greet, which is a name string uh, arrow forward unit. So this is here, instead of binding a value, what I did is I really bound greet to a function. So this is really representing greet is a function which is expecting one input, which is a name, and which is going to do something with it. So at that point, uh, if I follow the instruction, I see you should be able to run this in F sharp interactive. So let's do it. Greet world. Maybe uh, without a typo. And this is now executing the function greet with the argument world. And so I see hello world, like the timeless classic. A very exciting moment. Uh, and I think that's, uh, so now is like I see, hey, that's the end of the quick sorter, so that's cool. 
uh, uh, that was about F sharp. Two tasks to get started is that now you need data. So you have like, two addresses below. One of them is training sample.csv, the other one is validation sample.csv. Download it, put it on your machine. That's the data we're going to use today. And I think that completes section zero. And at that point, it's, like, uh, it's up to you to read the instruction in section one, two, three, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, if I will be going around, see if I can help, stuff like that. And uh, go make the machine smart. Cool. How's everyone doing? Everyone got their hello world? Absolutely amazing. Say what? <laughs> yeah, I would, I would join in, but he's got my laptop. <laughs> no, his power supply died, so I'm letting him use mine. Oh. <laughs> I can give it, but you actually feel because of that. Yeah, let's do it. I'm trying to make some machines smart, man. Yeah, yeah, that should be too bad. Yeah, go for it. I'm going to unplug so that people can't cheat off of me. <laughs>